is just unreal. I'm going to share it with you. And it's about a man that created his own micronation here in Australia. Got away with it. Prince George Casely, 28th of August 1925 to 13th of February 29, better known as Prince Leonard, was the founder of the self-proclaimed micronation, the Principality of Hutt River, within the Australian state of Western Australia. He governed the Hutt River from the 21st of April 1970 until his abdication in February 2017. At a coronation ceremony, he placed his son, Prince Graham, at the throne. Having pursued a number of occupations, Casely eventually settled on farming, purchasing a large wheat farm near the towns of Northampton and Geraldton in the 1960s, where he came up to own 75 square kilometres, 29 square mile. In 1970, he declared independence and also founded Hutt River Providence in response to a dispute with the uh, government of Western Australia over what the Casely family considered draconian wheat production quotas. His Royal Highness Prince Leonard, one of Hutt was the style he used by Casey from the creation of the Principality until his death. Born in Kalgoorlie, Western Australia, George William Casey worked on the railways, grew up alongside a brother Mervyn, was a high school dropout, left his education during his childhood when he was studying Sixth Standard. He worked for a shipping company based in Perth, although he, uh, he left school at 14, he described himself as a mathematician and physicist. He also claimed to have written and uh, articles for Never a Straight Answer. He served on the Royal Australian Air Force between 1943 and 46, including Borneo. The Hutt River Providence in 1969 established what he called Hutt River Providence in protest to quotas being placed on wheat. He declared independence on the 21st of April 1970, created his own flag, tax system governed by laws, which were enacted by his self-declared government, consisting five ministers, Leonard sought to evade paying taxes, and was found to owe three million in income tax in 2017. As part of the tax case, he sought to justify his position based on a pseudological straw man theory. Although Casey created stamps, micronation currency, Hutt River dollar visas, passports, and these visas were actually allowed to be stamped in real passports. People actually used to go and visit and get those visas stamped in real passports. For his sovereign state, the federal government of Australia never officially re recognised Hutt River as an official independent nation and later it became well-known tourist distraction, destruction, attraction. In January 2017, he announced after ruling for 45 years, he would be stepping down as prince to be succeeded by his youngest Graham's son. With a number of potential daughters, sons and daughters, his successor was nominated by Casey and approved by a Crown Committee. Some complimentary at the time have expected his older son Ian to be in a successor. June 2017, Casey was ordered by the Supreme Court of Western Australia to pay 2.7 and I mean million in unpaid tax. When he stepped down is when they the tax system hit him. I suppose he knew the tax system, but his son didn't know the tax system. And once he transferred the title to his son, he gave up whatever he was holding on to. Casely married to Shirley near Butler until her death on 7th July 2013. When the Principality went into a period of mourning, closing some of its service, she was styled as Her Royal Highness Princess Shirley of Hutt, Dame of the Rose of Sharon. She played host to dignitaries and diplomat representing visiting the Principality each year, as well as receiving television crews and magazine jewelers. She was always patroness and chair of the board, directors of the Red Cross of Hutt, Oh, there you go. So the Red Cross was there, Mason. Parallel organisation to the International Red Cross. As an inherent and in her medicine, Casely privately published a number of research papers and books on the subject. He is the subject of permanent ex exhibition at the National Museum of Australia in Canberra. Died two years after abdicating on 13th of February 2019, at the age of 93. His principality outlived him by 18 months and was still solved on the 3rd of August 2020. And these are all the articles. I remember seeing it a few times. I'll leave the link in the description for you. But it just seems as though as soon as he relinquished himself as being title, that's when they hit him. 
See, it has to be somehow either a, a, a one of the 13 bloodline families that just wanted to get out of and live in Australia. It'd have to be. He's got to be one of the 13 bloodlines because there is no way the Royal Mint would produce coins. You're not allowed to make your own coins or notes or stamps, uh, anything like that in Australia. It's uh, highly illegal. It, it just seems that he is just one of the royal families, like the 13 bloodlines, um, to have his own visa and system, passport system, all that kind of stuff. It's just doesn't make sense. Um, you or I tried it, you'd be thrown in jail straight away. So, printed, printed banknotes, coins, he had his own visa. You know, just, yeah. Earlier on, um, says he was struck at the Phillips Mint of America in association with the Lombardo Mint Canada. You wouldn't be able to import them. The government would have picked them up. It was pegged at the equivalent of the Australian dollar. One Australian dollar equals one dollar thirty. <laughs> Doesn't anymore. It's about seventy cents. Seventy cents of Australian equals one US dollar. Might be lower. Um, it says they may also be exchanged at Hong Kong branch of Dake and Company, a worldwide currency exchange. Maybe so. It, it he has to be part of the club because they were done by the Royal Mint after. Just trying to work out that sort of looks a bit like a um, mason symbol. Western stars wear something similar on their sh uh, sashes. One of the uh, strange things I noticed is one of the languages that they speak, official languages, French and Esperanto. Esperanto is a concentration of like different languages. Constructed like 1887. Very interesting. Support a gate. Saint coin. This one is his son. So the size of it. It's quite interesting. Um, have a look into it. I just, you know, the Queen sent him a letter in 2016, April 2016, from the Queen Elizabeth II, which communicated the Queen's good wishes on the anniversary and the founding of the Principality 46 years before on the 21st of April 1970. The letter from Buckingham Palace was signed by Sonia Bocca, the Senior Correspondent Office. Uh, it reads in part, I am conveyed Her Majesty's good wishes to you and all concerned for the most enjoyable and section on the 23rd of 24th of April to mark the 46th anniversary of the Prince Principality of Hutt River, the Queen was replying to a letter from Prince Letter congratulating her on her 90th birthday. I think even though this man only went to the sixth grade, he was he was a well educated man and knew how to play the system against them. He was fighting um compulsory acquisition and he remained loyal. Um he claimed in correspondence with the Governor General's office he was on an occasion inadvertently addressed as the administrator of Hutt River. 
He claimed that constitutes legal binding recognition of the principality. Thereafter, he started to style himself His Majesty Prince Leonard of Walnut Hut. He did this because he believed it would enable him to take advantage of the British Treason Act of 1945, which provides that a de facto king of nation must cannot be guilty of treason in relation to any act against the lawful king. So it goes on a bit about his um, his courts and that. He um, sent a tax claim back stating he was a... Um, he argued that he resided at Hutt River Province and it's not part of Australia and is not subject to the Australian taxation law. The ATO sent him a letter of demand and he responded with the document saying he was a foreign national and a non-residential of Australia. He also repeated it claimed he, but he was classed by the ATO as a non-resident of Australia for income tax pack purposes, did not pay tax. Said, um, the principality claimed that all social security benefits were withdrawn from Hutt River residents at the time of succession by the Australian government. Further claimed that the residents did not receive pensions, medical benefits, educational allowances, child endowments, or benefits normally paid to war veterans. Voting is compulsory by law in Australia, but Clasey claimed to have successfully removed the names of Hutt River residents from the Australian electoral roll. He admitted that he made annual payments to the Shire of Northampton the local government authority, although he chose to characterise these payments as gifts rather than council rates. The principality said that it levelled its own income tax at 0.5% on financial transactions by foreign companies registered in the province and personal accounts. National Museum of Australia had him in there. And that's a government one. So it's saying that the Providence had some sovereignty. Julie Lattice, a sociologist at Macquarie University, once stated that many officials in Western Australia, some high up, even nationally Australian, are happy to play out the myth of Hutt River sovereignty by attending Hutt River functions, returning correspondence and uh, abandoning their tax claim for tax. Hong Kong used does not recognise it, but it used to. When Principality succeeded, a Bill of Rights brief document outlining the Bill of Rights Hutt River decisions was drafted. Yeah. I had a feeling they'd go um try and shut it down once he stood down. Just interesting. I think he knew. I think he knew the syntax grammar and and what to say and how to speak because the way you speak is plays a lot into this. Anyway, hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching. You have a good day wherever you're in the world. Raise your vibrations. Much love. Bye.